Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the uh, I almost said March, but it's May 2nd uh, select board meeting. Uh, first order of business is we need to approve the agenda. Are there any um, addendums to the existing agenda? Roger. Uh, yeah, I'd like to move that we add uh, one item at the end of the agenda to discuss the matter concerning Route 28. Okay. So item F. Any other changes? There being none, do I have a motion to approve the agenda? I have a second. What? You need a second. I don't think he has. I don't think. Uh -huh. I don't think he. he anyone oh, has motion. Yeah. motion yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Got to have a motion. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to approve the agenda as amended. I'll second. Thank you both. Any further discussions? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? There being none, the uh, agenda is passed. Uh, next item is the consent agenda item, minutes of the April 18th meeting. We have a motion. Motion to approve consent agenda item. Thank you. <laughs> motion will second. Any discussion? If not, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion passes. We're up to public. This is the section of the agenda where we take any input from the public that's not included under the existing agenda items. Is there anyone who would like to speak to something on a town matter? Tom's got his hand raised. Oh. Hey, how's it going? Hey. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, great. So I guess I just, this is Glenn Anderson calling, or, uh, calling in, but I did want to talk about um, the recreational issues up here and zoning in uh, on Sweet Road across from the Hunger Mountain um, hiking trail. So I reached out to y'all by email and we don't necessarily have to get into it tonight, but I know I saw on the agenda, the you know, gravel grinders uh, up for discussion. I don't know if it's routed to come up through Waterworks um, and Sweet Road, but I did see the graders out today and they did a fantastic job. So, you know, as that's happening, I just want to check in and, you know, see if uh, in light of all that I shared with you that the, construction that we've got going on um if there's a way that we could get a temporary at least for the season um a no parking along sweet road maybe from say the bridge crossing over by debbie's house uh the hunger ravines to say the waterworks um if that's something that uh, could happen because we are going to have a whole bunch of machinery and trucks coming through for the construction. Um, but at the same point, uh, given the need for backcountry rescue and you know all the reasons that I've articulated previously, uh, it you know it may be something that we want to discuss as far as a future issue to make it more permanent, um, as well as try to find more off-street parking. Uh, so you know I'm bringing that up just to see if maybe tonight there's a way to get a temporary seasonal. Um, you know, on street parking ban, uh, even if it's just a temporary nature so that we can continue with as neighbors, what we need to do for the farm. Um, but also just, you know, so we can start to prepare for what it's gonna look like uh, going forward. Um, I appreciate it. thanks. Hey, thanks, Glenn. As a matter of fact, I think most of us have all seen and read um, your email. There are some valid points. Uh, most of the issues have to deal with zoning issues, which you know are more longer term. Um, I understand you're concerned about parking. Uh, that's something we could take under under advisement. I tried giving you a call today, but I guess you're on your phone. It kind of calls and then it shuts off. So I want to speak to you. Thank thank you for being brief. Uh, it, was, it was really helpful, but. Does any of the other board members have any questions about 
Glenn's request. Yeah, Glenn, uh, are you being specific about uh, a certain issue pertaining to construction or is this just an in general comment? <laughs> Uh, well, I think that there's maybe two layers to that, right? So the first part, and you know, let me just step back and say, you know, I apologize for missing that call. It was a, a busy day with the Cannabis Control Board earlier and just a bunch of issues trying to keep people moving forward. Um, but as far as, Chris, your, your issues, uh, and, you know, I will reach out, Mike, if, if there's a better time for you to chat, just let me know uh, by email. But, Chris, to your point, you know, I think for the short-term season, you know, I, I don't know how fluid it'd be to just create temporary measures so that we can get, you know, we are doing an 1800s barn restoration. Um, and so we're going to have trucks bringing really long 30 foot, 40 foot beams in potentially for restoration efforts. Um, there's a whole lot of different components to it, but, you know, I want to be proactive as far as work with the neighbors uh, with the state to make sure that you know we can uh, sort of get through you know parking on both sides um, which we see often and I think that's something that you know uh, the folks at the rescue and first responders are all acknowledging um, you know in Waterbury Ambulance and uh, you know I, I just want to make sure that the zoning issues that we're talking about you know as far as making sure that the agricultural zoning is reestablished for our farm you know that's something that you know I can sit back a little bit on but because of the nature of our um you know development cycle we do need to kind of have a uh an ability to know that we can forecast for you know e in you know egress and and uh access uh better than we can now so thank you yeah glenn the only thing i think that we could do is you know because people are really not supposed to be parking on the road and we could talk to the state police to kind of swing by there, you know, occasionally. The biggest issue is, I know this has been something that's gone on for a few years, you know, talking to the Department of Forests and Parks about expanding parking up at the Hunger Mountain. Uh, you know, we have discussed that issue infinitum. And yes, there's probably needs to be more parking up there, but I don't think people have, you know, people parking on the road. That's just not an applicable thing. So we could just use enforcement and that may have the effect that you're looking for. Yeah. And I do also want to say that the Vermont state troopers have been, you know, through here routinely and are doing a fantastic job with patrol. Um, you know, there are some issues that come with trailheads that, you know, as you probably know, um, you know, I'm not necessarily one to say that I have issues with the occasional uh, burnout and, a, a, you know, a bunch of donuts in the parking lot on an off hour. You know, I think it's more the bigger picture things that I have issues with when I see patterns of uh, particular, you know, vehicles and timings with locals coming up here to get away from maybe high visibility spots to make transactions, things like that. Uh, I think the state troopers are good with looking for that. I think they're doing a really solid job. So I just want to, you know, I know you have to consider all the contracts going forward. So um, I just want to put a shout out there. But also, you know, as far as finding that off street parking, you know, I think there is a case in the environmental courts now um, that I'm hoping we could find some reciprocity to and, you know, some ways to, um, you know, as a trail adopter for 30 years, I don't want to necessarily be part of the problem um, for my neighbors as well. So, you know, I'm hopeful that we can be part of that solution if it means creating some off street parking, um, you know, in our meadow just for a few cars, et cetera, on peak volume, that's fine. Um, but, you know, to be able to get to that point where you're talking about as far as, you know, enforcing something, that would be greatly appreciated. Right. And I don't think it's unique to Sweet Road. I think in terms of by the reservoir, at a couple of several of the parking areas, that's also a problem. And I know Bill has talked with the Department of Forest Parks and Recreation, and they're open to it, but we haven't heard anything concrete about expanding both on Blush Hill and by the dam, and as well as the Hunger, Hunger Mountain Trailhead, you know, any kind of expansion. But, you know, that's where it kind of really needs to lie. We'll, we'll, we'll keep this on the radar. And again, you know, when we speak to the state police folks, you know, we'll let them know to, you know, maybe ramp up, you know, visitation. So 
it's always when you see those green green cruisers that kind of stops people from doing bad things. Yeah, I, plan. yeah, I'll I'll let you guys get on with the evening. I know it's a long one, but I appreciate the consideration. Again, the state troopers have just been fantastic as far as the patrol up here. So, um, you know, keeping that up is is greatly appreciated. So, have a great night. Great, you too. Thanks, man. Any further questions or comments on that, or any other question from the public? My only comment on the board members, I would just say in general, I would defer to staff. And if there needs to be more understanding in the community about what the process is for requesting parking or other changes, um, I know we have some time here for races later tonight. Um, and just as someone coming off the planning commission again, we've got a great town planner now, assistant planning and zoning director as well. So, in terms of permitting needs and the like, um, I would direct folks to those town staff and certainly. Um, if there was a reason they weren't getting response, it could go here. But in general, my preference as a select board member would be that we have policies for those town staff right. to implement in those regards. Thanks, Alyssa. Um, Mike, yep. you've dealt with the bus hill issue up there. If I'm understanding correctly, the state police's duties, one of them is not parking enforcement. So right. Take the patrol up there till they're blue in the face, but they're not gonna. I don't believe they're gonna take the time to tell people who can't park on the down road. I mean, there is a safety issue there. I mean, well, that that's I think the same thing with L Force is if if it creates a safety issue. Yeah, the same things happening on Duffield Road. So Duffield, Sweet Road, so getting calls. Text all the time when things get jammed up there and uh, yeah, we have parking issues in our parking lot. <laughs> Can you yeah. imagine yeah. anything better? We have, and I don't know. We just got. I know Danny was on that email from uh, Gary Dillon. The parking over by um, the, the elementary school mm -hmm. that's still creating a problem. You know, it's it's going to be a net, never. It's it's going to be a a problem, but. We need to find some solutions, but tonight's not the night. Okay. There's no further questions. We'll move on. Uh, next item is uh, we're having a planning commission interview for uh, Dana Allen. <clears throat> Dana, you want to come, come on forward? Yeah, what do you, where do you come want? on. Come on, sir. Uh, we'll fix you up. Hi. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself and why you want to be on the planning commission? Sure. Um, Dana Allen have lived in the village um, in the utility district now mm -hmm. since 2013, right across from the um, Brookside Primary School. Um, moved back to Vermont in 2011, originally from Maine, went to school in Middlebury, ski bummed for a few years, came back for a master's in um, stormwater management, essentially, so environmental consulting is what I do. Worked in Burlington uh, for five, six years, and then in 2019, struck out on my own as a independent environmental consultant, do a lot of geographic information systems work, mapping, um, Focusing in water quality issues, um, but I wear a lot of hats. Um, I like being self employed because you get to hustle and do what you want to do um, and you get to choose your work. So that's my professional life in a relatively small nutshell. Um, over the course of that professional work, um, I've done a lot of planning adjacent and planning related work. Um, so stormwater master plans and things like that. Something I've always had an interest in. Um, I majored in geography at Middlebury. So that was something that, you know, looking at how people interact with their space and their place has always been an academic and professional interest. Um, and ever since I moved to Waterbury, I mean, I moved here very intentionally. I hated living in Burlington um, and I liked it here because it had the small village feeling. It was relatively close to a lot of different things. I like to ski, I like to mountain bike. I used to run the Waterbury Area Trails Alliance, um, was a co-founder of that group. Um, so did a lot of stuff with mountain biking over the past few years. Um, did a lot of stuff with FPR, um, planning parking lots mm -hmm. on occasion. 
um, and sometimes creating parking lots a little ad hoc as with the Perry Hill Trailhead. Um, why am I interested in the on Planning Commission? I think that right now Waterbury is in a, a liminal phase. We're kind of between two phases of our development. There's a lot of growing pains right now. Um, as a younger member of the community, I'm 41. Um, so I consider myself young. Maybe I'm optimistic. <laughs> <thinking about that. laughs> All the things. You guys can disagree if you want, but I'm going with it. Um, but anyway, as a younger member and someone who moved here at a relatively young age, um, you know, sort of early 30s, uh, we were lucky to be able to move in and buy a house. Um, we bought our place across from the Brookside Primary School um, for sale by owner, negotiated over a beer at the old cork space, um, and kind of like felt like we sort of sneaked into the community a little bit at a good time. Um, so we're, we feel lucky that we were able to like own a home in the community. Um, that's not necessarily the case for a lot of people in you know, sort of my position, my age, um, people younger than me, people older than me, that sort of thing. So I think that that's something that I'm interested in as part of planning commission is like, how can I contribute to that process? How can we promote more affordable housing in Waterbury? Um, I personally like living in a relatively you know, dense village center. How do we potentially promote more affordable housing for everyone, you know, sort of the, I don't know if anyone saw the seven days article recently, but about the missing middle. I think that's critical right now. I think we have a lot of programs for people who are at the very low end of the economic spectrum. Um, but again, there's this sort of middle ground that we don't really know how to handle. And I think that that's critical for us. Um, so promoting that level of affordability um, and also encouraging, this is a really old term. I don't even know if anyone uses it anymore, but smart growth. Um, so infill development. Yeah, it was a it was a big buzzword in the early 2000s. 20 years ago. Yeah, it was a big thing. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, trying to like densify our village center to the the degree that we can, um, and the degree that we want to as a community. I think that's important. Um, and preserving the character of the center and the village as much as we possibly can. Um, you know, I wear my heart on my sleeve as far as environmental issues go. So I do believe in environmental protection. Um, I'm also a realist and recognize that people need places to live, need businesses to be located around various parts of town. There are appropriate places for that. And there are potentially less appropriate places. So compromise is king or queen. Any questions from the board? Um, we have two positions open, as I understand. Yes. Uh, and can you clarify what the, what the terms are? Uh, one is a remainder, remainder of the two-year term ending in April 30th, 2024, and one is the full three-year term ending April 30th, 2025. Do you have a preference on either of those uh, positions? No, it's fine. <laughs> He's probably on <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know the opponent and I don't want to <laughs> handicap them. So we'll figure it out. But no, honestly, I don't have a strong time. Well, you have to you have to decide mm -hmm. I do. We do we do. You don't have to. Yeah. Yeah, if you okay, if you <clears throat> Katie doesn't either. Okay. <clears throat> Other questions? Yeah, so. You and I could sit and have a beer and talk for a long time. Uh, I've been in the construction industry for more than 40 years and being born here and raised here, I've seen pendulum swing as far as change. And the older I get, the more I recognize uh, so maybe it's a personal thing. I'm more concerned about open landscape and preserving that and I could talk about you know wildlife and fish in the brooks like you've never seen in your life back when I was a kid and those are gone now for the most part uh, water quality today is huge I think we're really missing the boat um, 
what we should be doing with this. We know what we are doing. Uh, <clears throat> there's just a whole host of things that you and I can talk about. Um, things that I've seen and experienced being on the front line and housing market sustainability thing. My concern, and, and I've expressed it to this board for a long time since I've been on the board, is that you know, we're going to regret not having those open landscapes. You know, is there a, is there a line in the sand that we draw in the community to say, you know, we're happy where we're at right now, and just maintain what we've got and keep the quality of life here. And obviously you moved here from Burlington because, it was too congested. Too I didn't feel the sense of community in Burlington was all that strong. That's it. You know, and <clears throat> I mean, also think about 2013, Waterbury was two years out of 2011. And we had a real strong sense of community. And I think we still have that. Um, I think there is a, still a strong sense of community here. Um, I think the key for us, especially right now, with everything that's happening in terms of this influx of people due to the pandemic, but also, frankly, this is not, not a trend that I see decreasing, um, because I believe pretty strongly that, that we will be a, a serious refuge for, for climate migration. I, I think that's going to be something that we deal with. Um, we're going to see it. We're not, we have our risks. We have floods, we have issues with rivers and floodplains and things like that. I mean, we know living in water very the issues with floods. But we're not a coastal community. We have a little bit less susceptibility. So I think we're going to see a lot more of that in years to come. And it's the sort of thing where like each community is going to have to come to grips with the fact that I think more and more people are going to want to live here. And Many of those people, now that we've seen this like remote work trend, which you know, bully for the people who can do it. I have a lot of friends who've moved here in the past year that I really like who work on the New York economy, the Boston economy, wherever they may work. Um, it's something that's a reality that we're just going to have to figure out. And I think one of those big things is like, let's figure out how to protect the people who don't necessarily work on that economy who still want to live here. The people who've been working at the res for 10 years who can't buy a house. How do we protect them? You know, because we need those people. And that was a big part of Waterbury's revitalization is like people coming to the Alchemist. Like that spurred on a lot of energy in the community um, and led to some level of downtown revitalization. You know, what if those people had no option for living here? You know, so we need to figure this out. So I agree with you that the protection of working landscapes, the protection of open landscapes is key. And I think we're actually pretty lucky in Waterbury and that we're surrounded by a lot of like open state land. That's really a, a key thing here in this community and, and being on the water board and sort of seeing that process with FPR for so long taught me a lot of things that I didn't know. Um, they have a lot of concerns when they're dealing with that land, that's for sure. So we're lucky in that sense, but you're not wrong in that like, we need to make sure that our zoning decisions to some degree promote that open landscape, that promote clustered development, if we can do that, you know? Planned unit developments that are maybe tighter than they are now or more dense than they are now. Um, there's a lot of different ways. Again, I'm not a planner. I need to learn a lot of this stuff. Like I'll be the first to admit that like my biggest, um, Asset in life is not necessarily intelligence, it's, it's resourcefulness. So I spend a lot of time looking for answers because I figure like I'm probably not the first person to have this problem, you know? And so Waterbury is not the first community to have this problem. There are good examples elsewhere. Um, you know, I was actually reading about Woodstock and their adoption of the rent local program from Big Sky Montana where they're incentivizing people with accessory dwelling units to put them into long-term versus short-term rental. And they're sort of in some way financially covering the gap. And as far as I know, they're the only community in Vermont that's looking at that. And that's, I mean, short-term rentals are a big issue because they're cutting out some of the long-term rentals in the town, but they're also an important source of income for people. 
but balance it you know, if you can. So I don't think you're ever going to solve the housing shortage or the, <laughs> yeah. afford, or the affordability <laughs> issue. I've, I've told people what happens over time if you watch carefully, humans always change the rules to satisfy themselves. At some point, I suspect there are zoning um, uh, subdivision rules will change at some point from, from like 10 acres only, uh, drop it to two acres only, or five acres only to two acres only. They'll chop it up more as pressure from, like you said, that influx. You know, what I just told somebody the other day, one of the bigger benefits to Waterbury right now is that there's a demographic of people who have been here probably for a fairly lengthy time, or in fact, some people that are coming in that have the ability to buy larger tracts of land and they're preserving it for the time being. But I know there's certain people who have those pieces of land once they pass away, their kids will have them and they're just gonna chop it up. Um, so we've kind of got that on our side right now, preserving some of that open landscape, but I suspect as time goes on, we'll see that start to decrease. And to your point, um, you know, building in tighter areas and more density may be the key, but at some point you're gonna run out of that. You know, it's just yeah. No, so, I mean, it's a pattern that's repeated itself so many times, and, you know, it's... So when do we learn? <laughs> uh, we never reach the end, but it's always about the process, and I think that's the important thing. It's like, let's put a good process in and try to follow it as much as we can, you know, because I'm not going to come up with an answer. No question. But I'm willing to be part of the solution or the process to solve some of the issues. So. Anyone, anyone else have questions? I'll put shameless plug for State of Vermont planning goals and our local town plan, both of which love smart growth. So, <laughs> right. see, are there some connection? And anyone else who wants to do a deep dive, always happy to chat planning. <laughs> Probably will. In the discourse, you've answered my questions. So I thank you for that. Lisa, you had a question? Yeah, I just wanted to um, um, ask you you mentioned that you come from a you know, in Burlington, a lot of what in Waterbury creates a sense of community here that didn't feel was the case in Burlington? Hmm. That's a hard question to answer because it's sort of a, an amorphous thing. Um, okay, so here's this. I'll, I'll, I'll offer this. And this sounds like a jokey answer, but it's honestly not. Um, I have always spent most of my time playing outdoors. I, I love being outside. Um, skiing and biking and running and hiking and that sort of thing. Um, and so I would say that I'm an outdoorsy person. Um, whereas in Burlington, I felt like the community was very outsidesy, which means that like if they're outside lined up for brunch or doing yoga on the waterfront, that was sufficient outdoor activity. And for me, that wasn't sufficient. And so when I started, honestly, like skiing and mountain biking, um, We'd always come to Waterbury to go ride at Perry Hill, or we'd pass through Waterbury on the way to like Sugar Bush or Snow to go skiing, or like any of the backcountry spots around here, you know, we kind of like pass through. And over time, kind of found a community of people, relatively like minded people who were more outdoors. And for whatever reason, it just felt like the right fit um, in terms of the sort of like cultural profile of the town. Um, and then also, too, I mean, like, we lived uh, for 40 years in a small town in Colorado called Crestview um, and walked and biked pretty much everywhere. And that's super important to me, to be able to walk or bike to most things that I want to do on a daily basis. So like from our house in the village, I biked here. Um, maybe we get a bike rack by the door. Mm -hmm. I know, but it's too far. I ride my bike so I don't have to walk. <laughs> Outside, I'm very fit. Exercise. I know. Uh, I, I realize I'm very fit. Um, yeah, ride my bike to the gym, like ride, you know, to the grocery store to get whatever. Like it's important. And I think that this is a community that that really fosters that. And so it's just one example of why I felt more at home here 
than I did in Burlington. Um, and I think the work-life balance here, people are, again, more outdoorsy. And so like, yeah, they work hard, but at the end of the day, Perry Hill is a two minute pedal from the house or whatever. And that was more important to me than sitting in traffic for 25 minutes to get out of Burlington to go do something. So. The reason I ask the question is because I think there's a lot of people that move from bigger cities into smaller towns for the reason that you just stated, which is we appreciate and value a lot those same things. And then unfortunately, once they get into the community, they bring with them those bigger city ideas. Uh, they take some good ideas and come up with it, but it's the ones that didn't work so well. So I only ask that because I think it's important for everybody to recognize and not forget what those differences are and make sure that when you make a decision, you keep that in mind when you make decisions. Mm -hmm. so I appreciate that. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. I don't want to call it a question, but I do want to be a little sensitive just to our time okay. tonight, yes. and we need to discuss Can you be relatively brief, Maureen? Okay, that's a great, that's a great question. Um, you, you talked about moving away from uh, Burlington. I'm just uh, curious in why Burlington has a position itself um, in the past few years to be one of the town that's recognizing how we need to be more inclusive. Um, and I'm just wondering. What is your understanding of inclusivity and what is your take on them that we have to put there and how would you carry your duty with that sense of inclusivity? Good question. Um, I firmly support that banner. And I think that it does promote a message of welcome and inclusivity. And I appreciate that. Um, as someone who's from away, um, you know, I'm from Maine, seen a lot of people coming in and out of Maine, you know, there's a lot of localism there. So I appreciate what it means to be not from a place and to adopt it. Um, and I honestly think that anyone deserves that chance. And in any way that we can foster that, whether it's through more affordable housing, more inclusive housing, specific specific housing options or specific business zoning policies to the extent that we legally and ethically can do those, then I am 100% for it. And I'll learn more about how that actually happens in a nuts and bolts way, but it's something that, you know, I've been included in this community, I appreciate that. And I don't want to deny anyone else like that. Thanks, Dana. If I know Melissa, you're going to call the question. Well, I guess we need, as a board, if I was to say, right. think we need to have a discussion about what the terms are. And I will say, as the person who just stepped off the planning session, I'm going to not make the motion or second, but I'll certainly vote. Mm -hmm. Okay. Would someone like to make that motion? Sure. Um, uh, I think it's uh, possibly a little unfair because we've heard a lot more from Dana tonight than we've heard from uh, Katie. Uh, right. Um, previously, but uh, I'm going to move that we uh, nominate uh, Dana for the full uh, term and Katie to fill out the remainder of the uh, the other term uh, for both positions on the planning commission. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Not a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, motion passes. Welcome to the Planning Commission. Thanks. <laughs> we'll have plenty of work for you. Thank you. Best of luck. Now it's homework time. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I, don't you. Know if there's anything I need to do now. I appreciate your time. <laughs> I see you lots. Should be in right. staff, and I'll put you on an email list. Um, and anyone who wants another thing to do Monday from seven to nine p.m. Public input is also always welcome at the Planning Commission. Thanks for that one. We're discussing Thanks. smart growth and density in the downtown area. Oh. Thank you for that plug for the planning session. <laughs> Always and forever. Okay, move on to the next topic, the uh, Harwood Union. Uh, Harwood Union. Unified School District. <laughs> I could never. Unified School District Director interview with uh, 
she is not present at the meeting. She had indicated she was going to call in, but that's what I was going to ask. Is she planning on calling in? She said she was. So I guess we will have to uh, pass over that interview. Uh, can you contact the applicant and see if we could reschedule? Well, I can. Um, I know the school board was hoping to make right a decision on May 11th. They still probably could do that without your blessing. Okay, right. Can we, can we make the the you don't make the appointment. You, you, you we, we make a recommendation. We make a recommendation right. to the school board. Okay. But they can still appoint. They can still recommendation. They, they can do whatever they want. Mails. But it would be nice if we would ever meet with the applicant at least here to make a recommendation for or, or against. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's an elected position. So but I will get in touch with her and a couple members of the school board to say that she didn't she wasn't able to make it for whatever reason. Is is there any possibility where she could present some more inf information about her background, you know, for that that we could review and then uh, you know then we could warn can we warn an email folks? No. No. Okay. That's that's uh, against the open meeting laws. Yeah. Even if we did it via like a, a little a little Zoom kind of thing, if you want to do a meeting, yeah. yeah. That's your project. What's your, what's your guys' pleasure on this? Just I let did me... send some information, a letter from her, right? Yeah. 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 I'm. I mean, I. There was nothing that stood out to me that was like a huge red flag. So right. I think I'm. I'm keen to let the school board make a decision because that's good theirs regardless so i'm okay passing on the recommendation but that's only my opinion so i don't know how everybody else feels i would agree with that just <laughs> anyone opposed to that uh what's your so proposal we don't just that we don't have to make a recommendation we don't have to, so we don't have to uh -huh. warn a new meeting and interview her and then you know right I'm okay letting the school board make no the decision. I would no choice right now, right? right. It's where we're at. So <laughs> I would say in, in if we had read something that not well, having some really scary. adverse information that would, you know, that we would have to decline her, you right. know, recommendation. I don't see we, we'll just leave it as let the school board make a decision. No, we'll, we'll move on to the next topic. Leaf Peepers Race, October 2nd, 2022. Is anyone here for? Uh, no, he was invited to attend as well. Um, I, I sent you the safety plan on the, right. on the uh, race. It's pretty much the same race that was pre COVID. Pre COVID. Mm -hmm. It's very okay. so complex. It goes out through Duxbury, yep. moves around out there, and then it's about. Same 5K. Uh, it's a 5K and a half marathon. Oh, okay. That was the 5K, I think. Was okay. Half marathon goes out of Duxbury over to, towards Candles Hump Road and back. Right. 5K goes around somewhere. Two to three, down two different the streets. Yeah. Um, they have our fire department, health and safety, I think they have a couple of sheriffs. It's, it's pretty straightforward. It's the same as what has been for years mm -hmm. pre COVID. I can't remember. Did they pay, they pay sure. for this show? Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Has there been there hasn't been in past years any negative like there's no issues or any no. feedback yet? No. I've heard some concern expressed by uh, residents in Duxbury. Uh, about the about uh, the just traffic the, yeah, just that the the lights uh, stops traffic or yeah, something. Yeah, uh, it's traffic. Uh, the runners, yeah. not the oh, okay. Yeah, not yeah, the yeah, runners, yeah. but the, the residents feel like. Yeah, it's, it's an inconvenience, but I don't know how, uh, how big a deal that is, and it's not Waterbury. So I don't know what to say to us. Yeah, I would, I would expect so. Yeah, probably ask their self their as well. Yeah. Do they do they need a decision tonight? Um, they'd like one. Okay. They certainly don't have to. It's not October, but I'm, I know they're planning. I think it's a great thing. Well, for all Waterbury, and I'll move that we uh, accept their plan. I'll second. 
Okay. Motion and second. Any further discussion? I would just note that we did get a memo that includes quote general public race awareness measures prior to the event. Mm -hmm. And I won't regurgitate the whole thing, but it does talk about notifications on front porch forum, event informational signage on town roads one week prior, postcards delivered to all houses on Main Street and River Road in Duxbury that are directly affected. Um, and then later on we have um Runners will be notified on race day and free race information that spectators are not to run the race course, parking in private drives and field slash yards will be prohibited. Um, and just noting that I appreciate Carlos notes there hasn't been fixed, so I appreciate that they address yeah. that in their application. Can you put anything about in the Waterbury roundabout slash reading, if I'm not mistaken? I, I know they said front porch forum, but that to me doesn't re reach. Lisa's nodding her head. Yeah, I, <laughs> as much as I believe in what you guys do, but I think they should be there because that reaches, uh, to me, much more far reaching than the front porch forum. Suggest that. Right. Um, in my opinion, it's not a reason to not approve it, but I certainly think we could provide that. Right. I think that yeah. would be, at least I'd make that recommendation to, to the motion. Yeah. I would accept that uh, amendment to the motion. What was the amendment to the motion? That they include a notice on, in Waterbury Reader roundabout. We want to define notice. I mean, if Lisa writes a story, do we consider that, or are we making them put a public informational thing in, like it's a DRB meeting? Um, I think they could. I, I don't have a problem with them providing with, with notice because they're going to be the experts on what's going to be happening there. Right. And I just want to word our motion to get at our intent. So I'm thinking and ensure there is notification. Right. What, was via, the, what was the original motion, Carl? The original motion was just to approve the leaf paper drinks on October 2nd. Okay. You want to make it do that one and then do the second one? It's probably. That'd probably be cleaner. Yeah. Okay. And all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. So then um, I basically made an amendment to that they include in there that the Leaf Peepers Organizing <laughs> Committee include in their uh, ad advertising and promotion that it be included in the Waterbury Reader slash roundabout. To, to notify the public of any issues, etc. So moved. Thank you. I'll second it. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? They have it in here. Seeking additional notification as possible, newspaper, radio, et cetera, in general public awareness. Okay. Sorry, it took me a minute. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't see that either. And I'm so that, that, I'm that, that probably then, then covers <laughs> yeah. that. We, yeah. we, we could probably just mention that aside. And just reflect in the minutes. It was noted to encourage staff, to encourage organizers to ensure there was notification in the Waterbury Reader as a newspaper of record. Perfect. Thank you. I think then we could probably withdraw that, you know, just have it as a recommendation. Sure. Okay. I'm not opposed to the motion. If we feel strongly about the motion, I was just. It looks like they got their bases really well covered with like this right up. Yeah, they sound like they've done the right thing. Okay, we'll move on to the next thing. Water gravel grinder event on May 15, 2022. So I sent you information on that, and I know Keith is here. He's involved in the organization of that event. Keith, if you could um, give us the highlights. Muted. Yeah, it's just I have just the email, right? That you okay, yeah. forwarded. Yeah. Um Sunday, May 15th, Ride Star 8 30 a.m. from Pilgrim Park. Approximately 500 participants with approximately 30 volunteers to support. Route going through Waterbury Center, Stow in Stow Hollow, back to the village. Some riders continue over to Moortown. Um, an aid station, as in past years at the Triangle Park Gazebo and Waterbury Center, which he submitted a request for. Um, that was as of April 21, so that, that might be result, reserved, I'm not sure. Um, and then we have an emergency action plan available. Uh, that seems to be the gist. Okay. I don't know if Keith, Keith is back at his 
Keith, do you have anything to add to what uh, Danny had presented? I think it's That's mostly fine. just to make you aware that the event is happening. Yeah. Okay. The bikers get like strung right. out. It's not like oh, a huge yeah. traffic problem. There's no, been no big complaints in past years when they've run it. Not that I'm aware of. No, no, nothing that I know of. I'll move to approve. Thank you. We have a second. Second. So a motion and a second. Any further discussion? There being none, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? There being none, motion passes. Okay. As a general note, topically, it might, I don't know, like, Carly, do we have an FAQ guide for like hosting an event in Waterford? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. I'm just thinking this is, you know, an email and like, hey, Nick, what permits? No, it's, do not, we need? it's not a town event. So. It's not a, it's not a mm -hmm. hosting event. I guess I'm seeing oh, that. Okay. So, an approval for like a park, we do have a process. Yeah. Yes. But this is more. We're using news for property. So this is just a notification. Yes. Right. Got it. Thank you. Anyone who uses public property has to ask for. In case you see it, you're wondering what's going on. And you right. Care about it. Right. Okay. We'll move on to discussion on the recruitment plan. Question from Vermont League of Cities and Towns. Just to keep everyone kind of up up to date, um, we had a first meeting with. Um, the folks from Vermont League of Cities and Towns, they had a bunch of questions which they outlined to the, uh, the recruitment uh, committee on what information that they need to go forward. Basically, uh, as the committee exists, it, it's two representatives from the select board, two representatives from the EFA district, and one representative from the library. And that's what it is as of now. Uh, to be able to move forward in developing recruitment information, they have asked us a series of questions. And I'll, I, I know I have passed out the questionnaire to all the select board members in advance. Um, excuse me. Sorry, continue, Mike. Yeah, uh, this, this, this would be the questions that, that we'll give you. Um, as you see, EFUD, Skip basically kind of answered, EFUD's going to actually have a meeting tomorrow night, and they're going to go over these same questions. Uh, maybe just so the public's aware, these, these are the following questions. They have more detail, but I'll read the general ones. Uh, when do you want the new person to start working? Is the pay range competitive given the current job market and housing prices? Will the new manager be required to live in the community? Does an accurate description of, of the job exist? Is there some form of organizational chart in existence? Should a profile of the town and position be developed to help inform applicants and a search committee, if any. Uh, step two would be under the advertisement. Where do you envision candidates coming from? Uh, where do you advertise? And then they gave us a draft plan. Uh, screening committee. Who does the select board want involved in the screening process? Does the board want to involve others just put on the select board? If so, who? How many, how many members does the board want on the screening committee? Does the board want the committee to screen all applicants or does it want the consultant to screen out those who do not meet the minimum qualifications? Has, board, has the board approved the charge for the uh, screening committee? And then step four is first round interviews. How does the board want the first round to be conducted remotely in person or a hybrid? How would, you, how would the board like to receive the screening committee's thoughts? Uh, as a committee recommendation, verbal reports from consultant and participating select board members. Step five, final interview process. Assuming final interviews are conducted in person, what travel expenses for the candidate traveling a distance is the town willing to cover? Secondly, is what elements of the final interview does the town wish to include as part of the process and who, and who decides? 
And three, how would the board like to debrief those participating in the final interview process? Should the manager be involved in debriefing? Step six, reference check, background check, negotiations on employment agreement. Is there an exist existing employment agreement with the incumbent manager? Is assist assistance in negotiating the initial key elements of an agreement desired? What is the name of the town legal counsel it plans to use for the review of the agreement? Some of these things we probably don't have a lot of control over, but I think we can answer these questions to the best of, of our ability. And myself and Danny, and actually Maroney, who's a uh, representative from the uh, library, uh, we could bring those, you know, you know, forward to when we have the next meeting with the um, consultant. And what is that? There is not. After this meeting, where we'll decide some, answer some of these questions for the consultant, and then. Um, then we'll, EFUD's going to have a meeting tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. I'll relay what the results are from our meeting. There was a question of, is, is that a conflict? Is that really a select, a selection committee meeting? Do we have to have it warned? I didn't, I'm not meet, meeting tomorrow with the EFUD as a, so I'm meeting as an as a select board member, just to bring them. So I don't think that we're in violation of the uh, town meeting, Maroney. Can I just make a, a suggestion to that? I looked at those questions uh, and I'm not a, a lawyer, but I've worked with lawyers and some of those questions, you may want to check with your lawyer. Counsel. Before yeah. you answer your counsel. Because uh, one of the questions there is whether you want that person to live in the town, and I don't think legally you can do that. So there's some questions that you may definitely right. There are, I know, other like you know, when you have like a fire chief or something, they they want to require the fire chief to live in the community that's it that, that's there. A lot of communities don't have that requirement, and to be quite honest, I don't see why we have to have that requirement. It would be nice if they lived in Waterbury, but I would just say that. Definitely talk with the council. Right. Well, I'd say in general, my understanding, right, is BLCT is helping to provide this. I mean, we're heard and agree is right. providing support and ensuring that we have a process. Um, do we have a strategy for talking through? Are we talking through skips responses? You know, can't this is the first I've seen them tonight? So we're not in need. That's right. right to us. Skips, so, respon gonna... skips responses came within an hour or two of this meeting. Right. No, I know. Um, but I'm just saying, so what? Um, What's our strategy from and the good thing is it's eight o'clock now. We have some time to right. work through this. Is there a proposed structure? And I think it's going through the questions and seeing if we're unified on some some of the answers. Going down kind of as what uh, you know, similar to what Skip you know did in his responses. So maybe we should just start moving right down the uh, the questions. When do you want the new person to start work working? I know in Skip's email, I think as we all talk that we wanted the person to start by November the 1st. What's it, Bill's proposed final date? December 31st. End of the year. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I know where I had on the, you know, their proposed list of dates, they have, December 5th, start work. I think we want to move that up because I, we all, we all have discussed in past select board meetings to have some time with the new select board manager, work with Bill, you know, get, get some background information. And I think we can do that because I think some of the, some of the in-between items can be consolidated. As long as they know that, I think, does anyone have a should we start earlier or do we want to go with the consultant's recommendation of the fifth? 
I think we should move as early as possible. November one is great. I think it, the best we could probably do is consolidate step two. It, that's a huge chunk. And I know one of Skip's very vocal concerns was getting things done. But I think this, uh, I'm sorry. No, I mean, I meant step one. I'm sorry about that. The defining the job qualifications. Um, but I think now that we're moving forward, I, I don't, I think, you know, two and a half months. I think we can do it in less than right. Right. So, um, yeah, as early as possible. We want as much overlap as possible. So, well, that's why I think we want right from this meeting move into really, you know, getting to the meat of the stuff. Have them develop things so the steering right. committee can have, you know. So November one. Should Bill have any input on this? No, he doesn't want it. He. I knew he didn't want it. <laughs> Some of it, but I didn't know if he was concerned about time frame. He budgeted for a certain time frame for yeah, overlap, but I can't remember. So I, yeah. I'm thinking it was too close to two months. Yeah. That's right. And and that would put us at that November 1st date. Plus, you have two major holidays in there. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is a good point. Realize that. Okay. If, if we could do it sooner, I think it would be great. You know, if we could hire someone, but I would say at the latest, we want to see this process done by November 1st to give them some, some time. So I'm seeing on step one, when do we want, we concur with DFUD's recommendation, November 1 if possible, and hearing that we concur with DFUD's recommendation, November 1 if possible, and that that would be a planned overlap of yes, November to December, but I'm also noting that this is not map matching this draft schedule we've received. Right, right. So we're discussing changes in what's labeled as step one, assuming we're <laughs> counting contract start as step zero, which currently defines April 25th to August 15th for this first step of defining job qualifications. And I heard August 1st as a potential end date for that, Roger. I think it might need to work backwards, Alyssa, from 12-5 right. from at the bottom mm -hmm. to 11-1, mm -hmm. and then work backwards to mm -hmm. the, the one before in order to... Yeah. And I don't know, to be frank, whether we do this or if we give Rick that end date and he does it. And I think that adjust, Rick will be able adjust to, accordingly pulling out. Right. Yeah. No, I think that's fine. I think Rick would do it. We say we want to hire by this. And I think there's some slush in some of these in interim dates that he could, you know, like especially the first one, define job qualifications and requirements for the position. I think that can be. Yeah. So I think the ask would be yeah. to give. Hope that we would be able to do that before August 15th. Uh, Me too. Uh, I don't see why we why we would delay that to the amount of time. And and because we're advancing the higher date, we're going to have to uh, advance the rest of the steps. So I, yeah. So Mike, when you when you do return these for really these answers, just the request would be to use that start date to then readjust the dates in this proposed. Okay. And I would say, I think specifically by compressing the defined job qualifications timeline, because I think we do want to ensure that there's a long window for recruitment. I mm -hmm. think it's like it's going to take folks, right. time, you know, in theory, want this to have one. adequate time for advertising and four times to apply. So I would hate to have that be the portion that gets cut. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not a for sure thing, but I'm mostly just saying that as background for you that I think we all think that's a pretty long, it's, you know, three proposals is what May, June, July half of August. Yeah. If we could do, I think we think we can do that in less than three and a half months or the committee can. The only, only thing I know that I know Bill doesn't want to really be intimately involved with the process, but I think we do need him to be intimately involved with some parts of the process, such as what are the functions that he does? We need him to put that, you yep. know, I don't think any of us are going to be able to do that. I think we need his assistance. Yep. Job description. There's See, question so, out in the audience. Are you taking any public comment right now? Uh, no. It'd be helpful if we kind of wait till the end. Let's get through these questions and then we could take public comment. I'm glad to come. Okay. Search committee function. Right. This is, we're really acting not as a search committee, we're acting as the select board where we're addressing some issues to the consultant. And then I think in the, when the search committee is fully defined, 
that's at that point. Just have a very brief practical Okay, briefly. Yeah, just. Summertime, everybody disappears. Everybody takes vacation. Even the candidates will be disappearing. This group will collectively be disappearing. But when you're talking about having someone hired in six months, so time is there for the estimate. Well, that's one of the reasons why each of the groups has appointed an alternate who we expect to be fully engaged. So if someone's, as you point, checking out, we, we want to keep on marching along. Like we can. Yeah, thank you. Um, so very well, well valid point. Mm -hmm. Okay, so B, who's responsible for approving the recruitment schedule? Is it both boards? I would, I would think it's the selection committee, the whole selection committee. Would it not be both full board or it's only the selection? Well, because remember the library, at, at this point, it adds the library. There's still, I know, has been some sentiment. Do we want public involvement, you know, on the thing? We're not, but I'm specifically, who's approving the recruitment schedule? Is this, this is the schedule that it's referring to? I don't think, I don't think it's, it's in, I think this is for discussion. I need, I need help. So the question B is referring to this document. Is that correct? Right, which is okay. probably going to be revised. Understood. So the question is, who is responsible for approving it? And Skip's recommendation is the full select board and EFUT. So I'm asking if we as a board agree on that, or does it only want to be the small committee? My opinion is that the whole board should look at and approve this schedule, not just the small committee, but I'm open to other ideas and not. And, and if everyone trusts just the committee to approve it, that's okay. Uh, yeah, well, I think that's a reasonable idea. I didn't catch uh, your name, but uh, this comment is well taken. Uh, Tom? Oh, Tom Scribner. Oh, okay. Sorry, Tom. Um, I do think that uh, we're, we're asking for this process to be accelerated, given that we're shortening the time frame and that uh, we should probably try to set some dates by which uh, both boards would want to come together and do the schedule. That answer your question? No. <laughs> I got more to do too. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Ultimately, it's the select board that's responsible. So they should at least be able to review the. I agree with that. Also, because candidly, there's been some communication challenges between the smaller committee and this board. So, okay. My only concern would be scheduling, and that I do know EFA, but I'm trying to pull up calendars here because they're saying their contract started April 25th, which is like our next meeting. No, that was last month. No, it was started with our first. We've already um, had the contract first done. meeting with the. Okay, sir. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Um, we also in. Right, so both boards are we? I think, yeah. And does it need to be, I don't know this policy wise, like could this schedule just be sent to everyone individually? And if anyone has questions or concerns, it could be written individually. Like we don't have to vote on it. We just have to not have a problem with it. Well, can this not be done at a sent and have a, a selection committee meeting? And if there's any issues, the select board and the EFUD board can comment. Say that again. Yeah, what? <laughs> I'm just saying is to expedite matters. I know what I'm hearing from Chris and, and a bit from Roger is that the select board ultimately should have decision making. Mm -hmm. And if the selection committee basically, because I think this schedule is going to be revised right after we speak to the consultant. Yes. And we'll get that. The selection committee will have that, bring it back to the board. And, you know, I really want to get, to be quite honest, get going. You know, I hate to, hate to wait till next select board meeting. 
you know, time's times are wasted. Right. So I'm asking if it has to be done in a meeting because I don't think we have to vote on it. Can it just be sent to all the select board members and the EFED members? Obviously, no one will see it because they'll be a part of that committee. So can it just be shown to folks? If there's big concerns, they can and raise if, them with you. If there's no problems with it, we'll all concur. Right. I just I'm think sorry. everyone needs to see it. Are we talking about the, the questions that were submitted? Or? Just the schedule, yeah. like the recruitment. This schedule. is they yeah. submitted a schedule okay. of which is already kind of off because they're looking at a yeah. selection of December 5th, which is beyond, beyond where we want to be. So we just need to tweak go with that schedule a little bit that will work. And I think the boards can, I don't think, we just need to adjust those things and he'll be able to make something that will work for everyone. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Okay. Is the pay range given the, uh, the, given the competitive current job market and housing, for what, what is the pay range competitive given the current job market and housing prices. I don't think we have kind of set out a thing for the incoming town, town, sure. town manager. Sure. Yeah. Right, so that's gonna be happening in probably that step one with the mm -hmm. final. I think that, will, as I agree, would happen within step one. I think we have to come up with you know, Bill has been on the job for 34 years and we have to look at, you know, what with what environment we are and now, you know, can we offer more or less or something? Or we'll probably have a range, you know, a starting pay range. You know, it depends upon who we get as applicants. I think it's going to determine what kind of a pay, pay range. So the response is pay ranges to be determined in discussions with BLCT and Bill. I'm comfortable with that. Yep. Agreed. Will it be advertised for the job? Yeah, I don't. We don't wait until we get candidates. We'll advertise. I, there will be a range, I assume. Right. right. Yeah. And that's how most jobs are really they, they saying. You know, from you know sixty thousand to ninety thousand or something of that nature. Exactly. You know, I'm just using that as numbers. And what major fringe benefits? I think it would just be the standard. You know, fringe package that all all employees get. Yeah, I mean, I think that will happen in in the same. Agreed. I was saying, I don't know if we just say it's part of the discussion of job qualifications and requirements and compensation. Yeah, I think compensation, compensation kind of all be added um, to that right. first step. Right. Which mm -hmm. can include fringe for all yeah. the things. Compensation is fringe. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, needs for the. <laughs> will will the, will the new town manager be required to live in the community? Well, it seems like we wouldn't necessarily, if we're not planning to require that, then it doesn't, then maybe we don't need to do much legal research. Right? I don't see that being an issue. Yeah, I don't see why we would require it. Unless he's planning on living in New York City or Boston. Or we can use that and then it wouldn't matter. Mm -hmm. Great. So no. Okay. Next, um, doesn't this is the tough one? There is no job description, and that's something I think this group is going to have to develop. But I think we need definitely assistance from Bill. I think he'll, he'll yeah. assist with that. What? I think he'll assist with that. Yeah. But he had offered that last meeting, actually, because he said when he came in, there was a group. Right. So thanks, he's willing to trust. Yeah, I think he's willing to do, you know, he's not willing to get into interviewing and stuff like that. But I think, you know, to develop a job description, which I think is essential that we have when we're offering a position, so people know this is what my responsibility is going to be. Do we want to have any minimum? Do we want to have any degrees requirements? Do we are there any kind of things that we want to have required of the applicant? I would think a certain uh, amount of experience in municipal management would be helpful. Any amount that you were thinking?
Anyone have other opinions on that? I think that all towns have the same management policy or they're all different. There's, there's a set guideline that the state of Vermont has for towns that have town manager government that the certain, but those are really based is like they prepare the budgets and stuff like that. They don't get down into the nitty gritty. Each individual town, because they're all different. You know, Waterbury is different than Newport. Newport's different from Burlington. So they all kind of have different requirements. So I think, you know, I think the time requirement, someone's experience, but the, is there any other things that people feel are essential to, for an applicant? Will we see the job description before it gets pulled out? Yeah. <clears throat> I, should, I, I recommend that you do. I would say yes. Yeah, absolutely. But so we have to develop that to the committee. Committee, Bill, Rick, and then, yeah, I don't imagine anything gets put out with the full board. Well, full board. There's a basic boilerplate, like you were just mentioning, and then there's things that this town differs from any others. Mm -hmm. that be listed separately. Mm -hmm. See, there's not even a a boilerplate of opinions for it that exists. That's a problem. Right. Yeah. Well, that's why we got well, that's why three months on the that's, step that's, one. I would assume that's what BLCT was all about. Absolutely. Absolutely. I was just saying it says no to be developed. So yes. I think again the discussion mm -hmm. of minimum qualifications. I appreciate you asking. I would say again, separate right. consideration with defining job qualifications and requirements and basic descriptions of, of step one. Right. And B is it's determined by a, a vote of the select board ultimately. So well, just, no, so this is, is the position established. And so, I think this gets to Maroney's question, which is, and we wish we had Ghost Bill Sheplock in the room with us. Waterbury does have the town manager form of government, which I believe took a vote of the town to implement that. So some right. towns have a town administrator who does administrative functions for a select board, but we have opted to have the town manager form of government, which insert chapter of Vermont state statute, which currently is Bill's job description is the things that are enabled and authorized via the town manager form of government. So I think that's what's reflected. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, is there some form of organizational chart in existence? I don't know. That's something <laughs> I have to ask. Know. So in this the, the bigger conversation, not to be hashed here, but huge <laughs> the org chart and the lack of job description and part of policy. and personnel policy part of our, our large issues at hand currently the reason we have five hour meetings so to set up this person for success this is essential and also to take things off our plate like happened last meeting and it's still continuing this personnel stuff it, it needs to be done and it needs to be stayed on top of because this town is not just two people running the show anymore. And to be yeah. professional, we got to have this. I so one of the real complications of this is the fact that we have two municipalities, mm -hmm. E-Fund and uh, the town. Um, like our public works uh, director works for E-Fund, mm -hmm. for the town. the town. So yeah. We'll and E-Fund can, can eventually go their own way, say, no, we choose a town manager. They could say, no, we, we, we're looking at someone else. Well, maybe that should, can't happen. Right. Maybe we should uh, sort that out in step one. <laughs> I was just going to say, that's my actually question is, so in terms of like scope for this, I think the answer to this question is no, it's not. And I think, you know, is a parallel track. We have task one, define job qualifications, requirements, pay range. Is there box two that also just says approve requisite town or chart, whatever else that needs to be done. Yeah, I think it's it's like one B or it just goes in there because I know it's a separate process. So it's not right. part of contract to be clear. It's right. Part of the town. But I would imagine coming into that position is something you want to ask for it in interviews. Like it's something you're gonna to want to see as a potential candidate. So I think to be able to have it by interview time would be pretty essential. I agree. It's pretty easy to get out. Okay. 
Next, should a profile of the town and position be developed to help inform applicants and search committee, if any? And yes, Skip said yes to be developed with, you know, with VLCT and, and the consultant's help. RW. Oh, that's RW? Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any disagreements to that? I think that's common sense. How should the community be described to the applicants? So these, so are these A through D like subsets of this um, profile? Yes. All right. Okay. I, I think it's what's in our on our website. That's kind of describes our town. Well, our website is Governor Waterbury and RW. Right. Mm -hmm. I think, but I think your point is a lot of this could be compiled from existing resources. Exactly. In terms of um, information on various websites that needs to be compiled and packaged. Anyone disagree with that? Who does that though? Whose responsibility is that to create that profile? Is it the search committee? I think it's 99% of them are there. Right. Mm -hmm. but, but someone needs to be responsible for copying and pasting and putting in a document. It's just whose job is what? It's like, to me, ultimately, the, to me, the consultant ultimately to does that, you know, could ask for information from various sources, but would do the final. So we would want to find out and, and confirm that they would be willing to do that. Yeah. What are the major upcoming issues facing the community? <laughs> Just a light That's, that, 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 is, <laughs> that could be a day's discussion. Uh, these are all the things that are going to be put in. Merger charter. Mm -hmm. How we've discussed infinitum housing issues. Yeah. You know, continued economic vitality of the town. I think. Yeah, I think those are the big broad brush things. Is there anything that we're really missing? That's Infrastructure improvement and maintenance. It's always a key component. Six months from now, it's drastically different. Food prices keep going up and down. Okay, I think that's a good general description. Uh, we also have two uh, recreation studies that are ongoing. Yeah, that's probably. And probably the uh, rewrite of the zoning rewrite. So nothing much. Okay. How well does the board responsible for hiring the manager work together? <laughs> Skip it. Okay. We haven't, <laughs> we haven't done it yet. Um, can I just, sorry, one on major issues. I just wanted to say, like, um, access and responsiveness and engaging with the I mean, I think it's kind of to Chris's point about infrastructure, but like, it's not a major issue, but the day to day of doing local government and interacting with the public and interacting with the public very right. consistently, professionally, all those things. Of course, I think that would be a smooth advancement of it, but I just want to say, I think, like, ease of access. Um, and that's the thing. Yep. Um, I think. Okay. Sorry. So how does that do? Mm -hmm. How old? I, I still don't, know, don't really how to respond to that. That's just. So I think Skip says it well. Yeah. yeah. Very brief. Um, next is how many employees is the manager responsible for supervising and what is the annual budget? We could provide the annual budget really easy. And I'm sure when Bill's here, I, I know it is around 100, if I'm not mistaken. Employees? Yeah. yeah. Well, I think. Less than 50 ish? Less than 50. I think he's saying because, like, well, he's counting all the fire, like, fire department people. Yeah, part time summer. 
recreation. Right, part timers and stuff. There are more than you think. You mentioned that number before. I've heard a hundred being. Mm -hmm. But, but I guess it's just like as direct um, supervisor or. But I agree with your comment. It's more like fifty, kind of, you know, fifty with the price, another fifty of being part timers. And I bet you could get a part time full time. Yeah, equivalent. Right, that's and something that versus indirect would, would be easy to provide the consultant. Um, and are are there? Any enterprise funds the manager is responsible for managing, such as a water, sewer, stormwater, or other related funds? If so, what is the budget for each? And we could all get that from, you know, the CIP stuff in, 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 in the town budget. So, yeah, I would say we definitely do. Yeah, that's, you'd add transfer that stuff's money. just yeah. a matter of compiling. Okay, advertisement. Where do you envision candidates coming from? Where to advertise, see draft plan. Um, they put A, any local over Vermont paper, seven days, Burlington Free Press, local. Probably have to add our Burlington Reader roundabout. You never, you never know who's right in our community who wants the job. Local, no question mark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other things that I mean, Wouldn't we uh, time? I would think the Times Argus would probably be one that we'd want to probably advertise in. Being that's a local paper. Um, I think that's a local paper. Mm -hmm. Regional sources. I thought they had a, a good list. Any any comments on the regional ones? Anything that people think should be added to that? Marani, did you have a question? Yeah, I was just curious, are we advertising outside Vermont or just within Vermont? Next bullet point. Well, mm -hmm. next. Yeah, we just said there will be a whole bunch of things. I think it would be outside of Vermont as well as inside. I think we're being, we'd be very restrictive by being just within our state. Right. You know, plus it's, I think, good for diversity and stuff that we have, a, you know, could potentially have a diverse pool of applicants. That's where I was in that. Mm -hmm. We're on the same page. Yeah, he's got regional sources, national sources, and then online. And I'm sure where he has national, international, city, county management association, oh. and the, there are kind of other things which are going to reach people from all over. And social media sites such as LinkedIn. Does anyone have any other social media sites that they think would be good places for us to advertise? Well, LinkedIn doesn't have a dash in it, just for right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, old, old guy. But, um, no, I mean, I folks who's in the yeah, I have payroll. Role. I would say, yeah, everyone hard. I know who's either hired or looked for work with Indeed has had really bad no, experiences, I so I wouldn't recommend it's not it. Cheap. But, yeah, no, it's not. So I don't recommend it. I mean, it, but I don't know enough about you know, when I did a lot of hiring on a long term basis, a lot of these big time you know, rec online recruiting services and advertising that were in existence. So, you know, I, I see the advertisements on television. I just don't, you know, I can't sort through what's good or bad. I would hope Chris <laughs> McGuire would have something to say about that. You're, you're laughing. Do you have any? No, I mean, I just think you're Danny. Indeed, is, uh, that's the last one I would like to Yeah, LinkedIn is, is pretty big. No, indeed. And just to read for folks who aren't looking at the memo, because I guess the point I would say too, like we have seven days on here. Seven days has an excellent online job board. So that's why I seven my days. job in Waterbury, but um, and then regional sources like New Hampshire League of Municipalities, VLCC, Mass Municipal Association. I do believe several of those have online bulletin boards as well. Yes. I know like planner positions too, like a lot of associations of people who do these things. I think that's where folks who are interested um, would likely go. So. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I guess the distinction of social media sites as opposed to online sites of other organizations. I think those are two arbitrary. little two different yeah. things. Okay, let's move on to the next three <clears throat> screening committee. Who does the select board want want involved in this uh, screening process? Does the board want to involve others beyond just the select board? I think we have already answered that question. It would be the. Um, the committee. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess yeah, just stating you're stating that we're saying the search committee mm -hmm. right. is serving as the screening committee. 
this is the question of the hour. How how many members does the board want on the screening com uh, committee? I know Skip has on his five, which is already what's on there. Mm -hmm. Do we want any other members? I think at the least we, we want input from both the employees, not as a full member, but have input from them as to qualities that they would like to see. Uh, I think that is really important. To me, I'm up in, a little bit up in the air on a quote public member. What's all your thoughts? Does this rate relate to this graph? Go ahead. You might include a staff member and or a public member a little later in the process. I would agree with that. I guess, well, and we have this graph charge for town manager screen, screening committee. So I'm just wondering if that's relevant. It's saying it's charged with assisting the search. It gives an outline of the work. I don't know if we have any thoughts on it. It's reviewing all applications, recommending candidates, first round interviews. Um, but then, yeah, I don't know what the process is beyond that. And screening committee versus data. Uh, I would think that the screening committee could do what you were just suggesting, Mike, is ask for input, both from the public and from the, the staff, but that we wouldn't necessarily want to inflate the number on the screening committee because we want to keep this process relatively tight and uh, expeditious. Chris? I agree. It's difficult for me to think that somebody from the public can have a justifiable point of view on this because 99% of them are so uninformed or misinformed or, you know, as to what really goes on. And I speak to that as a citizen of Waterbury who has become a select board member it has gone from seeing what I thought I was seeing to now what I really see. Even though I'm not a social media addicted person, I hear enough about social media to hear the pendulum on both sides and uh, it's difficult to think that somebody's going to have a, a real insight as to what's actually going on with it. Yeah, I think overall we're hearing that. Oh, sorry. Uh, I was, I mean, there could be a way of getting around it. Um, first of all, I would respect the decision that 90% of whatever it is can find in time form. Um, but um, I think there's a way I do know some members of the public will not be part of this process. So maybe there's a way of maybe putting out something out there to get input. Say, what kind of question do you want this lady board to mm -hmm. ask? And at least get that from the public and then rather than having a public member being part of it, at least get some input, some friendly question based on what she Yeah, and that's specifically what we asked Rick because I said. You know, it's really, I, I think it's really important to have particularly staff input. And then we've talked about public. So keeping the committee at five seems to be what most are most comfortable with. And then going back to Rick, and he said, um, he said he does have ideas and experience with getting input. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's a really good way because I know there have been, in, in, in response to Chris's question, I too just don't want any, you know, everyone has an opinion on something. And if they have a gripe, you know, they'll say, I want to be there because I want to direct who's the new town manager. So we'll have this and that done. Could I think I have... maybe let's, I don't, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I'm sorry. Yeah. I just want to maybe reframe the way we're talking about the members of our community mm -hmm. and understand that they want to help. And yes, some people have an agenda, but it's because they care about things. And I know we hear about it and right. it gets exhausting. I know. Yeah. Um, but I want to make sure that we remember we're representing them. We maybe talk about them in, in a more positive light 
thank them for wanting to be involved and also know that we have, I'm hesitant to call it expertise because I'm only in my second year, but we have, um, you know, it's our job that we're here to do. Right. So we'll take that responsibility, do what we can to incorporate input, but also know that it might not be a good fit for a public member to be on the committee. Perfectly said. And the, where I was going is that I've heard from people who've had, they've either been past select board members, past people who know about, you know, government, pro our government process, who I think can add to the process. But I think that ultimately having the, the staff as well as public give that input to the committee, I think would be the best way because as if the committee gets too big, it's just going to bog itself down. So I think what I'm hearing is the consensus that a five-person committee works works for us. Any disagreement? Okay. And I think we just need to be clear about figuring out where those opportunities for input are and communicating them. I'm seeing some even looking down at the final interview process, mm -hmm. so we can discuss there, but I do think it's really important. Again, we've been kind of working internally as a board to figure out how to put the screening committee together and how they communicate with us. You know, I think this charge for the screening committee is a useful tool in that regard. It's noting that the final decision rests with the select board, but I also think to Danny's point, we as a select board have a responsibility to communicate out this is what the process is, and this is where those opportunities for input are. So as we move forward, figuring out what those are and then clearly sharing them. Yeah. Totally agree. Yeah, that, uh, and in pursuit of that, uh, perhaps uh, when we reset the uh, schedule here, we can set a date for uh, public input uh, for qualifications that we're looking for and any other input that people have on this process. We need to because we, we don't want them to have input the day before we're going to go through another right. step. Right. And, and yeah. there could be a series of steps where right. when we present the answers to all these questions, when they're finalized, and, and set dates for input right. at various stages. I assume we're all on agreement on that. Okay. Has the board approved the charge for the screening committee? I think we, we have by selecting. What's that, Alyssa? Number three. Oh, did I? Okay. R writing too much on the thing, it's getting a little messy. Does the board want the committee to screen all applicants or does it want the consultant to screen out those who do not meet the minimum qualifications? I, I think it's, we're going to have some sort of minimum qualification. So if they don't have, I don't want to be bothered a lot of time. And I think the, that's what we're paying the consultant to do. Just my opinion. Any, any mm -hmm. disagreement? Okay. So has the board, has the board approved the charge for the screen? a charge for the screening committee. I assume they mean what they're going to do. And I think we have. Uh, has everyone read it? And is it We've developed question? an yeah. open, I think it's still going to be developed to somewhat, especially now that we're looking at, yes, we're going with a five member board with input. So I think that's what, and we just have to define what, what the committee is going to do and when, and when that will report back to the board. Any other comments on that? Okay. Step four, first round interviews. How does the board want the first round to be conducted? Remotely, in person, or a hybrid? I think first round seems appropriate to give options if someone's really far away to let them Zoom and that they're a great candidate, you know, have them in person. Yeah. Is there a number that we're thinking about having as a number of first round candidates or let the process determine that? I think we just did by meeting certain qualifications. Right. We've already said it'll toss out, but if, if we have 25 people that meet the qualifications, 
I think that's part of this, the or that's at least part of this drafted screening team charge that the recommending eight to 10 candidates for first round interviews, conducting those first interviews, and then considering what two to three candidates should be available for second round interview process. So maybe we can finalize that as part of finalizing this charge when we do that. Any other comments from that? Okay. Uh, how would the board like to receive the screening committee's thoughts as a committee recommendation, verbal report from consultants and participating select board members? Skip didn't have an opinion on that. Hmm. Um, I like I like the idea of having uh, the consultant also give reports, so it's not just the committee. I don't know. I mean, it's it's more for your benefit and in theory that would be there, but they're saying right. consultant and committee. What do you guys think? I mean, I think ultimately, if it's our committee with creating recommendations, we should then hear said recommendations. Mm -hmm. um, but input from both versus just the committee, or do you think if that's what we're talking about? What do you mean? Like input from Rick as well as the committee recommendation. Right. I'm yeah. hearing and sorry, this is like a weirdly worded sentence. So mm -hmm. as a committee recommendation, I think there should be a committee recommendation. I think a verbal report from the consultant and from Mike and Danny participating select board members may also make sense if there was something to elaborate on or if there's, I don't know. Yeah, the question, so I'm not sure, word. sorry, that's, I'm just trying to parse what we're getting yeah. at. Um, but yeah. so the answer, yes. Some of these questions are a little disjointed. Yeah. yeah. So, per personally, uh, I'd like to get uh, your recommendations on the top five candidates and the reasons why you position them uh, as uh, the, the top five candidates and key strengths and you know, questions that you're going to go after for those candidates. No, I think that's reasonable, very reasonable. Okay. Any other comments on that? Next final interview process, assuming final interviews are conducted in person, which I assume they would be, what travel expenses for candidates traveling a distance is, is a town willing to cover? I'm sure Rick could probably give us some sort of guidance on that. But, you know, if someone's coming from Hong Kong, you know, or some, you know, we should probably have some sort of a budget for someone traveling. You're also going to need an advertising budget. So, right. Um, I would think that we need an overall budget for this process. And in their initial proposal, I think they had like a, yeah, a range. Of, right. So, uh, but I think once we know exactly where we're going to go, we'll have a more firm, you know, advertising budget. Mm -hmm. But I would just say it's it's kind of a TBD. I think we we want to have an, a certain allowance to allow people traveling a distance to, to come. You know, maybe given our overall budget, uh, uh, we can recommend. recommend yeah, I would say he he's probably had enough experience with this. Fun travel that is needed to be a reasonable yeah. expense so folks can visit and right. relative to well not wanting to be posted but right. relative to the yeah. overall cost of the search and the importance for the future of the community if there's an outstanding right. candidate that needs to travel we should support that it looks yeah. like there was a range so right. that way if, like let's say that was like 750 dollars and it was divided by three candidates and only two of them needed it and they can have a higher stipend but right. or a higher reimbursement but and, and some may, you know, say you're having a candidate coming from Connecticut, they may be able to drive versus fly. You would hope so. <laughs> you would hope so, but you, you, you never know. Maybe they don't drive, you know. And the, 
but we'll start with the budget. Yeah. Also a consideration. <laughs> also a consideration. <laughs> <Yeah. Okay. laughs> Driving may be a key uh, qualification. Yeah. Okay. What elements of the final interview does the town wish to conduct as part of the process and who decides? We basically have eliminated Bill already because he says he doesn't want to. Okay, the final interview. Yeah, he doesn't want to. He no, doesn't. but this says opportunity for Q and A. So if I was taking a job in a town and someone had that job for thirty four years and mm -hmm. I had the opportunity to ask him questions, personally I would like to do. But if Bill's not willing to, clearly we're not going to force him to do anything. Right. Yeah, maybe we need to follow up with him to yeah. clarify if he would do that. Though it says no Bill preference, so that does assume he's been asked. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, let's not assume. On this but that is a good you good comment because I mean? if, if an applicant does have wants to speak to Bill about the job, I think that's a reasonable request. And if he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to. But I, I'd rather confirm with him than assume he was double right. checked with because I don't know how the communication's been. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, and just as a note, the tour of the town facilities and stuff was also a time when Rick said it was a good time for staff. To also interact with those final candidates and he had you know organizationally ideas of how that worked well and how we've done it in the past <laughs> would would the committee be the ones conducting the tour tour with the applicants i assume or representatives right it doesn't yeah have to be probably not all five right i'm assuming it's going to be a few that can't attend mm -hmm. Maybe you'd want a staff member. Yeah. On that. No, definitely. I think a staff member would be that would be very appropriate because the staff member is going to know the infrastructure better than any of us. Written assignment. Do we want to specify the town employee thing as part of the tour of town and facilities or is this all letter? Do we think that some yeah, I think we could include it in B, but we would want to spell it out explicitly. Now, I don't know if they're talking about a written assignment. Do we want them to submit a copy of something of a document that they have produced, you know, work to see how cognizant their ideas are in written form? Yeah, can we get clarification? Maybe that we could ask Rick about that. Because I think that's, you know, really hearing, seeing someone's writing style. If someone can't put together a good, good business letter, I'd have a lot of concerns. You know, same, um, I would have a lot of concerns with someone who can't communicate well. I think that's, to me, is more important than his writing, but I think writing is important too. I don't know if it's also a past work sample as opposed to a written assignment. I'm not like, do we want candidates? Is this going to be writing assignment? Right. I, guess I don't know what that means. Is it going to be asking a candidate to say something about water breaker, or is it saying we have qualifications that likely will include municipal experience and share? I would say, I'm can you provide a document? Whole, I don't know. Right. Can you provide a document that you've shown how, how you dealt with a problem in a past job or something like that? But I think Rick's is going to be best to guide us on that. <clears throat> Panel interview. Who do you want to participate? As someone who's not on the search committee, I'll be edgy and say, is it more effective to do final interviews with the full board if the full board is making the hiring decision rather than regurgitating? Yeah. What, what, what the search committee heard in the Final interview to the board. I know Skip, but the search committee. I kind of agree with you, Alyssa. I said to me, the I don't think to have three other people in, on that interview is that you know I always hate to have like when you have interviews, you have 10, 12 people on an interviewing board, which is you know, very intimidating to a candidate. Mm, we could do that, like, could we record them or something? Because I guess I'm cognizant to both. I really was just thinking practically, like, if it's a search yeah. me, it's going to be literally regurgitated. Should we want to say oh, that? Okay. that should be both. Like, 
So that was my question is the order of these events or a panel, are we having a first interview and then a panel interview and then a select board interview? Oops. These are the final interviews, right? Okay. Scratch the middle one. I think the final interview is the interview. The select board interview. Right. Once you get down to eliminating the candidates to reasonable, you call people in. That's your interview. Right. Then you so may we want to decide sometimes if you really feel you need a second interview for some for some reason. But I, I'm hoping we could do it with one interview. Oh, well, two. A preliminary right. interview. Yeah. Right. One, one more. Coming too? I guess so. I was misunderstanding this clearly, and I apologize because I hadn't looked at the second one. So we have a select board interview and we have a TBD. So that's already on here. This is saying a panel interview. I guess, I mean, not to use the example, when I interviewed the economic development director for Vitalizing Waterbury, I interviewed with Bill and Karen at RW and Wayne Liberton and someone from the community and right. John Grenier. And um, so I guess that. Now that I'm rereading his panel interview, is it the search committee likes to get proposed? Is it, or is it that something a more public? public um, yeah. Anyway, I just think we should before we immediately say no. That's a okay. separate thing, and it's watching you engage with diverse constituencies. That isn't just us as a board. So or, let that be TBD. Well, did you love input and who that would be effective for? Or who would be on that? Roger, Chris. Any opinions? Um, well, I think the, the the full select board and the full board of PFA are going to be voting on this, so we've got to be involved in this final interview. Um, I guess I'm not clear on what the difference would be uh, with this panel interview with the search committee. Versus that final interview with, with the two boards. I think what Alyssa was speaking to is that it, it probably wouldn't be the search committee. More a panel would be more patchwork of perhaps lead, a leader in the community, maybe a staff member, maybe a public member, maybe someone from RW. So people with the, with diverse interests and investments in the town asking different questions on their own behalf. Mm -hmm. um, okay. How does that all trickle down to the select board? Once we're all there. No idea. <laughs> the consultant. This whole and thing that now is a little bit different than what happened with uh, the police department. The lawful discussion. The commission was charged with bringing several different options to the table and basically brought one. So, I guess we made this too long process. Mm -hmm. you know, how does that fix it at the very end of the result? Mm -hmm. There's, unless we're all there at that. Like sitting in as like audience members, and then then and my concern is if we're bringing someone here, if this is final and it's like two days, is the panel interview one day and then select board interviews the next day? And that to Chris's point, if you're not in the audience, then do those people have to write up their opinions and get them to you before the next? And that just feels unreasonable. So the option would be then unreasonable and perhaps not hundred percent transparent or clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, mean, I think this is an important decision for yeah. us. Uh, and I think we can probably agree to clear our calendars for two days uh, and can sit in the audience while other people in the community do that panel thing and hear the answers and form our own opinions and then come together as the two boards together mm -hmm. for that final interview. And then we're going to have to deliberate and we can make our final choice. Mm -hmm. Because that sounds like a reasonable process. Uh, you know, it's not worth the time that we invest in it. Yeah, there may be questions asked there that haven't been asked yet or mm -hmm. you know, overlooked. So, what's the board's pleasure on that? And I hate to drag somebody through such a long process, but we went through mm -hmm. many hurdles. To, 
I, don't know, I guess, and I guess my almost framing is, is that a public interview? And I don't know, like, I'm, I'm trying to think of the school board district or superintendent, but like that type of thing, right? There's well, a I think video. Charles, staff is, you know. Right, so staff is going to know. So, so right. I guess I stand with what Roger just said about it's two days and it could be a lot. Um, it is another, it's another thing we have to think about and talk right. about, so I am aware that's an added complication, but. Seems worth it. And it's only going to be the final two or three candidates. Um, this is an important to, to me just to muck things up a little bit. Is okay. is this us looking at this decision and you're dealing with personal information? Is this something that needs to be done in an in executive session? It's kind of like you know, that's why I look at any kind of like hiring and firing kind of things for kind of. I think Rick would know. I'm sure he's right. done this before, so he could probably guide us, and then we can say what we're. I agree with that. That's really, yeah. You know, how much? How much? Because those are personal and information. Yeah. So as as for guidance from Rick, whether I, it's public or part of it's public, and what we can and can't. I can see what part of it could be public, right. but I uh, also there's a lot that might not want to, you know, you know, just in defense of people's personal information, you know. Mm -hmm. May not want to be out there on Fourth Street, you know. So let's go ask for it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, how would the board like to debrief those participating in the final interview process? Should the manager be involved in the debriefing? I think the second part is pretty. I don't, I don't think Bill's going to want to be part of that. Mm -hmm. I think he made that very clear. Um, well, I'm not, not really, I don't know if he's talking about the board or the committee debrief. I'm a little confused on that, that question. Does it seem like he's referring to debrief just from the process or when we're letting folks know the, our selection? Because mm -hmm. if it's referring to a, like just the debriefing process, I'm not Privy to, I haven't done anything like that, so I don't know how that would go. But if it's referring to like letting folks know, no, we haven't chosen you, and what that process looks like, then I think we could. Let's ask that. Rick on that question. I read this kind of analyzing this. So we're saying that we're hypothetically two to three candidates are going to come for a tour. They're going to give us some writing. So there's going to be some sort of panel interview, TBD. Obviously, we would directly be involved in that final interview. But how do we go from that to? A top and final candidate. I don't oh, know. Like how do we deliver is it yeah, deliberation? I'm I I guess debrief the brief. if the panel interview is distinct, that would need to be debriefed. But I think we're discussing some of that will be determined in conjunction with the structure of this panel interview. Um then I yeah, otherwise I guess I'm just trying to think of what else fits in this process because then we're at reference checks. Um is it final deliberation? So right, it means yeah, and so does that I didn't know the consultant does that. Um, so it's not debrief with those it's deliberate about participants right is that more accurate for you yeah or i guess or we could just ask that question we could just ask the lct yeah what's the question what what's what would the process be for final i hear i just wrote down what you said so i appreciate that and lastly, step six, reference check, background check, negotiations on employment. Is there an existing employment agreement with the incumbent manager? That I know is no. And is assistance in negotiating the initial key elements of the agreement desired? Yes. I would say, yeah, the consultant is going to know that. And what is what is the name of the uh, town's legal counsel to use for the review of the agreement? It should be Joe McClain. Yes, yeah, it's the old page. Question. Anything else that we need to bring up before? Can we just talk about what the next steps are? I hate I hate to be right here. I hear you loud and clear. This was really clarifying for me in seeing, and again, thank you to both of you and to the Utah and Library folks participating. We talked about updating this timeline and how that's going to get back to us. 
we have this charge. Are we discussing that at our next meeting? We also got a list of advertising, which seems fine. Um, but like, what are next steps in terms of when the committee is meeting again, when things are coming back to us? This note that we do need to have a really clear outline to the public about what the process looks like when it's finalized and when that might be. I think as soon as EFUD meets and kind of has the decision, then I think very shortly thereafter, we'll probably warn a steering committee meeting of this. And I want to go forward at lightning speed. So I think this is good. You know, we're doing our part. EFUD's doing their part tomorrow. I'll communicate what we have said. Hopefully we'll have kind of, I think we'll have joint agreement on going forward, um, skips the contact to the consultant. So I think we're okay on, we'll be okay on moving forward pretty quick. So I hope that answers your question, Alisa. Yeah, I would say maybe can we just put an update on the next agenda? Um, at a minimum for our board, just to check in on where things are, um, and we can go from there. Yep. Excellent suggestion. And that would include answers to these questions, uh, plus a revised schedule. Yeah, the revised schedule one should go around to the full board when it comes right. to us. And we're still okay. I know the consensus was probably to have the committee meet because I know our first meeting was during the daytime. And I know some people kind of, you know, and I think we'll have a lot of meetings via Zoom. You know, some people will be here, like Rick will meet via Zoom because that's going to save a lot of our travel costs and time costs from him commuting. And I think, you know, that's where our next meeting is where the rubber is going to meet the road. Where we're going to get, a, I think, a good outline on where we're going. And this, this will be no more, and we should hopefully have a, a firm, you know, set of deliverables that that B, BLCP will be able to produce. Okay. Thank you all for being so patient. And the last item on the agenda, uh, employee issue. Oh, God, I yeah. Um, this does concern. Uh, some personal information about a particular employee, and so I move that we uh, go to executive session to discuss it. Second, Dan. Before that, could I make a general comment? I think it's 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 really important. Um, one, I had a fairly lengthy conversation this morning with uh, Lisa from the roundabout reader and we, we I just want to clarify because I wound up I de-plugged myself this weekend from you know from internet and then all of a sudden on Sunday I see the the reader and her article about changes in, in Waterbury government and I was concerned uh, you know I said I, I always try to respect people's Sundays as being family day and stuff like that. So I called her this morning and we had a very frank conversation. And I just made a very clear point that if you notice when we met at the last select board meeting, that the title for the new rec director's position was going to be assistant municipal manager for community services. And I read her article and the way the article read to me is as if we were appointing a assistant municipal manager. And I just wanna put this clearly on the record. That is not true. Because if you look at it, it's assistant municipal manager for community services. What that was going to do was, Bill has always been, Bill Sheplick, our town manager, has always been overwhelmed in terms of stuff. He's taken on everything. More power to him. He's been really good about doing that. But, you know, I've talked to Bill many times. I said, 
sometimes, Bill, you really need to download things. You know, he's taking on the roles of health officer, you know, animal control officer, done this and that. And I said, Bill, these things are all just not sustainable. And that's one of the reasons why when in his proposal to make some adjustments to people's pay to justify Nick is still going to be in charge of all the recreation programs, but he was going to be helping the town manager because we have this whole ARPA thing. And that was going to be a big thing that, you know, he was going to assist in, in that process. And there were some other assignments that were being given to him related to community services. To me, that's not a full assistant municipal manager. And I had a conversation today with, with Nick about it. And we, we, we were reached a real daytime about it. You know, I think he was very comfortable and he, he saw my side. His side was, you know, long-term for his career path. You know, he, he has to look out for what he's going to do. It, it, I, I said, I encourage you. I want to hear have you stay in our municipal government, we cannot make any promises to you and we will not make any promises to you, you know, to that there is any kind of pending future advancement. It's like what we've talked about, it's gonna to be total open competition. So if Nick applies, he will be treated like any applicant. And the only thing I really need want to be clarified that he is not the, an assistant municipal manager. That job title would have totally different responsibilities. Uh, Bill Woodruff has a lot of things that would probably go in, into that respons responsibilities as to others. So I just wanna make that clear. I know I've spoken to Lisa. I know that's why before we go into executive session, I just wanted to be very forthright and very transparent to all the people in the town of Waterbury that we're not making any kind of decisions that are outside, you know, trying, trying to second guess or pre-select anyone for a position. So I've said my piece. Well, I, to your point, going back to what I said earlier about 99% of the public not necessarily being informed about facts of what really happens here. There can be some I don't know how to say this. Misprintings or misunderstandings or social media personal opinions uh, things get blown out of proportion. One person takes somebody's comment differently than somebody else does. And next thing you know, it's gone into orbit. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's different. I don't mean that the public doesn't have a, you know, doesn't care about their community, but the truth of the matter is, even us as select board members are ignorant to a lot of what goes on in, the internal workings of the municipality and uh, so you have to be careful uh, with these types of things because they can fall right off the rails and i hear a hundred percent the only thing is the newspaper article right in front street the first two paragraphs are basically saying we have a, a new you know, kind of assistant municipal manager. And I know later it says assistant municipal manager for com community services, but people sometimes, they read, oh, we have, we, have, we have a new assistant municipal manager and, and, and that's all, all they probably read in that whole article. Not that the rest of the article is totally fair, but 
It also led with discussion of the municipal manager search. So just to say, as I pointed out earlier, it behooves us as a board to communicate clearly and transparently what our process is, because then it's really easy to accurately report on it and have an informed. Yeah. To echo Alyssa, I think we we also can learn from this because I don't know that we as a board do a great job in terms of getting, and I think it's because we're essentially volunteers and we work a lot of hours so right. folks doing stuff that you don't have time to do um but we signed up for it that said um it's something that is a priority for me is like how how do we communicate better to the public the decisions we're making what we're doing yes it is there there's a recording is it are we expecting someone to watch a three-hour meeting on no we're not so um it's something i do care a lot about and i would love to work with us all about is how do we if we want an image presented and we want communication done, you know, we can work with Lisa and she's doing her job and she's writing a newspaper. But if, if there's something we want out, let's call Lisa and let's tell her what to what we want, what we decided. Let's let's put updates in from Porch Farm like Teresa and, and Tom do. Um, so that that's not obviously not going to be solved tonight, but there is some personal responsibility to be had on our part. Not that it's easy. <laughs> Great point, um, and I agree with both of you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Speaking of the public, we have Moroni. Do you have a comment? Yeah, so I'm assuming this is the manager section is when the fire is supposed to be, right? When so, we go into the section. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So just a couple um, a couple things. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sitting here. My, my heart is beating. Um, you know, I just, I really think it's problematic for an elected official who serves the public to continue twice now to say that 99% of us voters are uneducated. I didn't say I that. I guess I thought under the 1% who's educated for that here, but I just think that's a very, very problematic and insulting to the right of residents of the voters. Second point that I want to make, um, and I think it's 90% of those words that you mentioned were bad, that would be very problematic. Um, the second point I wanted to make, um, I forgot the second point, <laughs> okay. just because that is too, too familiar or proud of it. But again, that's that's very problematic for anyone who's elected to consider 90%, 99% of the constitution and educate. That's very, very exciting and problematic. Well, let me just say this. Um, I think that we had another audible criticism in both contexts. Um, he didn't say an educator, he said um, one in one. And there's a big difference. Uh, as a member of the community, as Judge Kennedy, a member of these meetings, and as uh, I can honestly say that, and I'm, and I'm an educated member of the community, I've been uninformed because I haven't been attending a lot of these meetings. Um, and I've spoken to a lot of members of the public. And most are uninformed, but it's not because they necessarily choose to be uninformed. Many are just trying to work every day hard for the family so they can provide it for their family. So I don't believe that um, that Chris's comments are meant from a bad place, more from a realistic point of view. Uh, I can understand why you might, you might see that that could be taken in an offensive way, but it's not in the, I don't believe it's meant in that way. And um, and I think we do have to be realistic and recognize that people in America, in Waterbury, Vermont, are, are like I said, uh, a lot of them are working really hard and they're so busy uh, that they don't necessarily have the time. I would hope that we can figure out a way to help them make the time to become more informed, right? And, 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 and to be more So important. I'm gonna just and I really quickly, I'm gonna let you finish. I just, I wanna remind us that when the public is speaking, you're actually addressing us as a board and not each other. Yep. So yep. I, I, I'm interrupting you, but I want you to finish. I just wanted to remind you, the, um, you may not know, we don't discuss it a lot, but when the public is speaking, it goes towards the select board and not to um, other members of the public. Board. So thank you. Yeah, and Danny, you. can you have them speak up? I can't hear on Zoom, so, or on the, uh, over the internet, so oh, if you can have them speak sorry, to the mic, yeah, too. Yeah. Um, thank so you, sir. Um, I, I didn't want to finish. Yeah, okay. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, so we have, sorry. Go on. Oh, and can I also just, hey, I just wanted to add, I want to also, as somebody who's been here 30 years, you know, I think Chris's point was really well received, and I don't think it's a political thing. I just want to be frank. I've been to, like, 
how many of these meetings and first of all you're all riveting so you're like rock stars with it right like we appreciate the work <laughs> the volunteer work is real so you know it's respected that you know as a community that we should you know accept that you can say things without feeling attacked and i think realistically 99 percent of the issues are not going to be understood by every single member of this community and that's why we all work together in teams and, and come together so you know i appreciate the work that's being done there um the inclusivity all of that so i know you have executive session but i did also just want to raise one other question from a public perspective it, not question so much as just a comment regarding the two municipalities of efud and and the town just as you go forward um you know the the whole issue with cannabis licensing, I was at the board meeting this morning. And so I just, I think, you know, the opt-in meeting that we had before the select board previously encompasses um, the entirety of, of this municipality. But if you see any kind of, um, I don't want to say conflict, but potential overlap, because I mean, what is EFUD essentially is, is it its own unique, atomically you know identically separated entity or is it a subservient municipality similar to the old village those are questions that we need to know before licensing happens so if you guys can help clarify if you anticipate so has their annual informational meeting at 7 p.m tomorrow that i'm pretty exactly. sure includes the zoom so if you need a public forum to ask any questions anyone has about you, Fun, I strongly encourage there. you to pop back on Zoom tomorrow. So I'm absolutely there just to see what's up. Uh, and then they have their annual meeting next week on the 11th. So sorry, yeah. just too tempting at the time. No, no, no. I'll definitely be there and, and, and I'll raise that. I just want to make sure that like you as a select board see that issue because on the Heady Vermont website, uh, which cascades through to the control board, there's literally a notification of the historic village as the licensed uh, municipality that opted in. So um, it's it's a small point of order, but just want to put on your radar. Uh, again, thank you. And if you are having members of the public speak uh, to you from that location, if you could have them address through the mic, it's just super hard to hear here. All right, thanks again. Thank you, thank you Glenn. Thanks, if, Glenn. If you can, if you have any comments, if you could put very concisely you know, to the select board members what your concerns are, and we will try to help you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just let me last one last comment. I thought that I thought it's a nice little conversation, but I've been going to a lot of select board meetings and observing this setup. And this one is very unique and interesting. Yeah. So all the select board meetings that actually face the public. Yeah. I think this is more of a setup for this next session where you're talking among yourself. And also talking about inclusion here. Look how you set up. Yeah, thank you. We have talked about, talked about that infinitum. Mm -hmm. right, thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Ryan. Okay, so we have had those comments. Uh, I think we now need, we had a motion to go into executive session. All in favor, say aye. aye. So, this is an evaluation aye. of a public employee. Anybody so, all those that are on the Zoom meeting, I'll be putting back out into the wait room. Hi, Ortho Media. I hope you can hear us. Um, we're <laughs> back. This computer says 1026, but our phone says 1018. Um, so we are coming out of executive session. Any action? Uh, I think we've agreed not to take any action tonight uh, in respect to the fact that our town manager is still on vacation and uh, we'll table this until the, our next meeting. Okay. Thank you. With that. Any further questions? If not, I make a uh, <laughs> ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. And second. second. Holy in favor. I guess I'm getting tired. Thought you did your best work after 10 months. No. Thank you all. I blame it on COVID. Yeah. <laughs>